So let's put some numbers on these expressions we talked about for subthreshold swing and on and off current. Considering this particular NFET, with these particular specifications, doping and built-in potential and oxide thickness and geometric dimensions and the threshold voltage, we'll just take all those as known. And let's just find out what these things are. And this is at a uh, power supply voltage of 0 0.8 volts, which may seem kind of low, but in, in CMOS, that's probably about what it is. When the gate is attached to the drain and the power supply, then you consider the, the MOSFET to be on. When the gate is at ground, you consider the MOSFET to be off. So in order to proceed with the calculations, we need to first nail down the, the body effect parameter, eta. And so let's go ahead and just calculate that with the givens uh, using using the expression that we've been been thinking about in this chapter. Plug in some numbers and you get value. So the a value for this eta is 1.156. So it's pretty close to 1. And it, like I've always said, it's something close to 1. And it could be even closer to 1 than this, but this is what it is. But this will help us to quickly estimate the subthreshold swing just from the the 60 times eta expression. So the subthreshold swing is 60 times eta or 69 millivolts per decade, per decade of current. Generally speaking, subthreshold swings are less than 100. So 69 is you know, a lot closer to the theoretical minimum of 60 than it is to, to 100. So as far as I know, that's considered to be a decent subthreshold swing. Now let's get the off current using this expression that we came up with the last time, which was based on the subthreshold current expression, uh, which we didn't we didn't derive, but I gave it just gave it to you. We have all of the given, so we can just plop them in there, and we can calculate an off current of half a nanoamp. So when the MOSFET is off, it is leaking half a nanoamp of current. Imagine if you had a million gates on a chip, then that would be half a milliamp of leakage current in this million gate chip. Now let's put the gate at the power supply voltage. And to estimate the current that's going through, let's just use the plain old IV model that was worked out, that we worked out in chapter six. The drain source current versus the drain source voltage. And we have all of these numbers, so you can just, once again, put them all in there. Get the um, mobility estimated from figure 2-5. I actually used that equation that's right underneath uh, figure 2-5 in, in whose book to estimate the mobility of the electrons in the channel, given the doping. And we get a current of about a milliamp, which is quite a bit, 990 microamps. And you also never see it because the switching happens so fast that you don't rise up to that, I'm going to, I'm going to guess, because the most empirical values of this current are uh, on the order of 100 microamps instead of 900 microamps. And I think it's a, a little high because it probably never happens. But, you know, a, a CMOS switch, you know, at operating at 1 gigahertz is on for 10 or 12 percent of the time. And so you might have 100, 120 picoseconds where current can flow. It just never rises to this level, I think. It, it, it kind of looks like this. If the CMOS is switching, there's a CMOS switching on, and then now it's switching off. So, so the MOSFET switching on, the MOSFET switching off. And it's only during those switching operations that any current can be drawn. Current certainly doesn't go from low to high instantly. It has a, a slew to it. Because of that, I don't think you ever actually get all the way up to that value we just calculated. Um, and an empirical level would be more like 100 microamps. So that's the basic ideas of the on and off currents and calculation of subthreshold swing for uh, MOSFET inside of CMOS.